Hi, welcome back. In this episode, we are observing a species called Ryan. Ryan grows his beard around October time. He doesn't know how to grow a mustache, so he goes for the whole thing. He's trying to tell us what we are going to create in this video. It's gonna be a honeycomb in the form of cylinder. So like this video and let's go. All right, in this episode, I am going to create a cylindrical honeycomb. This requires a little bit of calculation. We cannot just keep drawing. Otherwise, we're not gonna end up on a homogenic honeycomb. First thing first, I'm gonna draw a circle and set its diameter to four inches. This represents the final size of my cylinder. After I did this, I calculate the circumference of that circle, which is 12.56 something. This is the value I need in order to calculate the size of each hexagon. I need to draw two hexagons in order to create a honeycomb after I pattern it. At this stage, I was deciding on the size of each hexagon. I know I have to calculate it by the time it comes to patterning, but then I realized it would make my job much easier if I went ahead and applied some equations to the drawing. If you don't know how to apply equations to the drawing, check the link in the description below that it will take you to a video that will teach you how to work with them. Now over here, I have applied a value to the size of each hexagon, which I thought would work. But in fact, this is not the right move. I'm only speculating here. I, I'm going with my intuition, which seemed not that right. Sometimes my intuitions are also not that right. Funnily enough, the second hexagon, which was a copy of the first one, it was not fully defined and I could just destroy it. After applying all the necessary sketch relations to the second hexagon, I started to apply a distance between the two, which funnily enough was not accepted by SolidWorks. It did not make any sense because I was not fully defining my sketch by no means, but I had to delete the first dimension in order to be able to set the distance between the two. Now, the variable that I assigned for the distance between the two hexagons is called strut, which represent the thickness of your honeycomb. On the side, we have a full strut width, which is whatever value you wanna assign. And the one that I'm applying right now, or at least trying to apply the vertical one, has to represent half of that value because after I pattern this, I am creating half of the thickness, the other half will be mirrored and I will end up on the full strut width. Again, SolidWorks gave me a lot of headache before it allowed me to set that value, which was a little bit weird. Sometimes you will face these issues in SolidWorks. They don't have any logical explanations. You're gonna have to just keep working with it, keep deleting some sketch relations or dimensions until it works. Because again, it was not logical. At this point, I have my sketch fully defined and I'm just evaluating if everything looks proportionate and right. Now, at this point, I have to go ahead and calculate the minimum pattern length I need when I'm going to work with a linear pattern or circular pattern, in this case, to create my honeycomb. I figured if I go ahead and take my circumference of the circle and have 10 of these patterns, each pattern has two hexagons, so I'm gonna have 10 of them, it, it means over the circumference of the cylinder, we're gonna end up with 20 hexagons. So I get the value 12.566 something divided by 10. You know what that would be, 1.2566 something. And then you assign that value here. Again, a lot of mistakes and errors unnecessary from SolidWorks before I could apply that. Now I applied it as an equation so I could change it later on if I wanted to. At this point, I have my pattern ready. Now I'm going to create my cylinder. I'm working with thin feature and make sure to set the thickness on the outer side and if you set it on the inside you're gonna have to work with the outer surface because the thickness that you apply with the thin feature changes the circumference of your cylinder now i need 10 of them and they fit perfectly around the circumference and we have a homogenic strut thickness over that now at this point we're gonna have to pattern this linearly upwards and downwards along the length of the cylinder right because we only have one row of hexagons so I'm gonna use the axis of the cylinder as my direction and go back to my sketch in order to calculate the vertical distance I need to pattern these two hexagons. So at first I thought I came with the right value but it turned out the value was not right 
and the pattern did not look homogenic. So after a couple of trial and errors, I came to the right value and set the second and third linear pattern and created this cylindrical honeycomb. Now, from this point on, you can just keep adding to your cylindrical honeycomb if you want to add a frame, if you want to add a cap at a bottom, or if you want to close some of the hexagons, you can, but this is all you need to do in order to create something like this. Don't forget it, guys. If you're working on a pattern that is supposed to be wrapped around a cylinder, you need to calculate the circumference of your final cylinder first, apply that value to your number of patterns. You have to calculate in advance how many of those patterns you're going to have before you start creating something. If you want to learn this and stuff like that more, make sure to go and click on the link top right corner to take you to my webinar where you can learn a lot as SOLIDWORKS beginners. Ryan now has made this point and he's making his much moves during October time. That's a very tough move. Top right corner. Thumbs up. Like this video. Subscribe. Make comment. Like. Share. Tell your friends. Print this screenshot of the thumbnail and show it at school. Okay, that's enough. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I see you next week.